Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Wowza Webinars. My name is Justin Miller, and this is the How Low Can You Go With Low Latency webinar series. This one specifically, Fast and Furious with SRT. So thank you, everyone, for joining us here. Uh, we are here with Barry Owen, the VP of Engineering for Wowza Media Systems. Barry, how's it going today? Going great, Justin. Thanks a lot. I think you have a nicer view than I do. That's for sure. Than most and we people, I guess. <laughs> very true, very true. And we also have uh, Gislan Colette, and he is with us. He is the VP of Product Management for High Vision. Uh, Gislan, how is it going? Very good. Thanks for uh, inviting me. No problem. I, I hear there is um, some uh, fire alarm snafus going on where you are. Yeah, I think I think things are pretty much over. But yeah, I had to, to uh, find a backup plan with regards to internet connectivity and location. Well, I'm glad that uh, you found a location. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for being here. Uh, again, the uh, topic here is uh, SRT, that is Secure Reliable Transport. Uh, basically, we are going to have an agenda of uh, questions we are going to uh, discuss sort of between the three of us. And then afterwards, we will have Q&A. But I just want to say hello to everyone who's joined right now. Uh, if you noticed, you should see that there is a Q&A window available to you. Now, that's not the chat window. That is the Q&A window. And it's from the Q&A window. We will be taking questions, but only after uh, we go through our main agenda. Uh, and please have questions based around SRT. That would be definitely great. Um, just before we get started, I would like to make sure that this is working, that everyone can hear and see us. So uh, if you could type into the Q&A window uh, where you're from, I'd appreciate that. That way I know uh, you can actually ask questions in the future. So let's see if anybody's gonna type in there. All right, we got Patricia from England. How's it going? We got Rachel from Austin. Wow, Mitt from Estonia. Okay, we got people all over and local and Trinidad and San Francisco. Okay, a lot of people responding. Awesome, great to see you all. Again, there is a chat window. Uh, Andrew, I see you wrote South Africa in the chat window. Please use the QA window for any questions, but you guys are always welcome to chat with each other while we have this webinar, that's fine. Um, okay, uh, one thing I also wanted to do before we get started is we do have a poll and we'd love to know a little bit more about uh, those people who have joined today. So I'm going to launch the poll right now. And uh, the polling questions are first, are you currently streaming live video? So we'd love to know if you actually are streaming right now or just thinking about streaming. Uh, please feel free to enter your answers in that poll. Uh, the second is, what type of latency do you see in your stream? Uh, so we'd like to know, is it over 15 seconds? Is it over 10 seconds? Is it over six seconds or three seconds? Or is it under? Are you getting um, some pretty low latency? We'd love to know. Uh, we'd also love to know if you currently use Wowza as well as what industry you are in. So I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to answer those. And then we're gonna jump into uh, some questions about uh, demystifying open source SRT. I think I'm gonna start by asking you questions, uh, Gislan, if that's okay? Absolutely. All right. All right, guys, I'm gonna end the poll now. Uh, looks like quite a bit of you are already streaming. That's great to hear. Uh, also, uh, I see um, many of you actually do have some pretty low latency streams. So definitely, I wanted, I'd love to know more what you're currently using to be under three seconds. Uh, but we're also getting a good percentage there that's over 15 seconds. And I'm sure you want to fix that. So uh, definitely, let's talk about it. Let's, let's get right into things. So Gislan, let's, let's just talk about uh, open source SRT. Can you tell us a little about it, how we got started, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so thanks, uh, Justin. So, yeah, so we developed SRT, uh, you know, a few years back, and it was really to address, uh, you know, one of the, the key problem that uh, none of the existing technologies uh, from a, a streaming point of view could address. Um, so one was obviously to be able to transport content media 
uh, regardless of the codec, uh, in a way where the quality would be preserved end to end, right? But from an integrity point of view. Uh, the other one was uh, having a combination of quality and low latency. Often these things uh, are, are kind of uh, exclusive, right? So it's one or the other. So there was clearly a need for interactivity, uh, whether it's for uh, camera control, whether it's for a chat on the side, whether it's for any form of interaction, could be even like an audio intercom or, or a queue, right? Uh, so latency was, uh, you know, was really key as, as part of the, any event typically. Uh, being IT friendly, uh, being firewall friendly, so, so to minimize the, the intervention that the IT department had to do every time there's an event. So if, if you're doing an event that is just a few hours and you have to prep days and days ahead of time to get the, the IT approval, obviously it's sometimes not worth it, right? So, um, so that was definitely one of the, the key thing that, uh, you know, the, the people behind SRT uh, wanted to overcome. Security, uh, obviously, like encryption, uh, you know, preserving again the the you know the integrity of the stream, uh, so not leaking content, especially in uh, nowadays when when there's content being leaked uh, left and right sometimes. So, preserving the the content and end to end, not only from a packet uh, you know point of view, but also from a security point of view. And when these ingredients were in place, uh, you know, with Wowza, we we'll definitely talked about, okay, how can we foster the adoption so, uh, you know, customers could actually benefit from these things and, uh, you know, foster the adoption through an ecosystem where everything can interoperate, right? So that, that was really the, the main thing behind, uh, you know, the, the SRT development. Um, and then more concretely now what this means is, um, so this is actually a, a video or slide that shows, uh, you know, a couple of things, right? So on the lower left uh, quadrant, right? So what you see is the, is the live source. Um, and then what you see on, above is, uh, is what a standard stream would look like at four megabits, uh, but over a, a network that has, uh, you know, an average of 2% packet loss. It doesn't take that much, actually, of packet loss to really start affecting the video. Uh, things fall apart pretty quickly, and, and there's no audio, but the you know, audio would probably be even the, the first one that would get dropped uh, and, and be really you know, full of hiccups. Um, so, so that's what the standard stream would look like when there's bottlenecks, uh, especially from a five, first mile point of view. And then on the upper right, what you see is actually is the same content, is the exact same payload, but instead of uh, being sent over a standard uh, transport stream protocol, it's using SRT instead. So what you see is that, you know, obviously there, there's absolutely zero packet loss and the latency between the source uh, or, or the stream actually that was um, just the standard transport stream and the SRT version, they're pretty, pretty close. So with just a little bit of a premium of latency, you get flawless picture quality. Um, and, and just to conclude on that one, so the, on the uh, lower right, what you see is uh, the same content, but this time encoded in HEVC, also going through SRT, same network, same everything. Uh, but just to show also that, you know, the, the protocol itself is, is really agnostic, right? So it, it could be any type of thing, uh, you know, codec inside. Uh, obviously, there's more and more HEVC content. So SRT didn't have to be modified to support uh, additional codecs. It just natively supported them. Awesome. I hope people at home can see the differences that you're talking about. Uh, looks great on my screen. I can definitely see uh, the huge differences that uh, SRT makes. I mean, you look at that top left and uh, that is, that's horrible. <laughs> you definitely don't want that. I mean, yeah, that looks some, bad for your clients, period. <laughs> so sometimes people think that uh, you need the 10% packet loss before, you know, affecting the performances. But as, as I said, like it doesn't take much, like the 2%, but it you know, could be even a little less than that. And you would still see a fair amount of hiccups and it w just wouldn't be watchable, actually. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about then how this technology operates. Um, I don't know, Barry, if you want to chat a little about that or just you wanted to start by talking a little bit about uh, what's under the hood. Yeah, so essentially this, this diagram is a, uh, it shows you like the, the SRT is based on a packet retransmission technology. So we're sending a, a single bitrate. 
Um, so any device, whether it's a gateway, an encoder, transcoder, like any network device, uh, would essentially transmit packets. So in this diagram, it, it shows you that it, from device A to device B um, sends a packet in a certain sequence. And then for whatever reason, there, there could be packet loss. So in this, in this example, two, uh, five, and six have been lost. So while the, 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 the receiver re-requests the packet two, five, and six, uh, so the device uh, on the left-hand side, it has to keep a copy. So that's the way it works. The, the, the transmitter doesn't really actually induce additional latency. The only thing it does is it keeps a cache of the packet, a copy of the packet that are being transmitted. So it, uh, it keeps a copy of the, like the, the length of the buffer is the same plus typically the, the length of the network. So, uh, you know, like one time, like the, the round trip time. So just to make sure that it, it factors in the enough time to be able to receive the request for packets, uh, you know, the, the request for the packets that were missing. So the, the encoder always has a little bit more or the transmitter always has a little bit more um, buffer, but there are, it's not an intrusive buffer. It's just a cache to be able to keep a copy just in case packets were lost. Um, and then here, the like this is a, another uh, representation essentially where you have uh, the content that is on the, on the left-hand side, uh, left-hand side, so the source. And if you were to send that over a, you know, a public internet or even potentially a wireless connection, uh, so you would see that the, the shape of the stream as transmitted over uh, you know, unpredictable network would look very different. And concretely what this means, it means that the, on the receiving side of the destination, it would probably have to buffer a lot more to actually, especially if it's video, to play uh, content smoothly. Right, so it's good to have a low latency <clears throat> protocol, but if you were to defer all the responsibility of making sure that there's a smooth play out uh, to a third party, to uh, your receiving end, then it would, it would kind of defer also the latency responsibility. So, so the protocol takes care of that through uh, you know, high resolution time stamping. And uh, so the receiver then uh, the SRT output right, gets into a, a situation where you have the exact same shape as the, as the source. So you don't need to do any extra buffering on the receiving end. Um, you just need to have enough to uh, compensate for packet loss, but you don't need to do additional buffering to reconstruct the original shape of the stream. And if you look, at, if you look across the bottom on this diagram, you really notice that, the, you know, an uncontrolled transmission, you're going to get a highly variable frame rate. And that frame rate is going to lead to excessive buffering on the client, regardless if they want to play the stream back in, in real time properly. And SRT just you know, effectively eliminates that step and, and reduces that client side effort needed. Exactly. All right. Yeah, good to know. So, so um, Barry, if we can continue on with uh, our own experiences seeing, the, seeing SRT, can you tell me a little about how it compares uh, in terms of low latency? Sure, and, and, and let me take a step back too. You know, when, when High Vision came to us with, with the notion of, of SRT, we we're, were immediately interested because it solves a key problem for our customers, which is you know, not only a latency aspect, but the, but the difficulty of, of that first mile contribution on variable networks. And, you know, the notion of creating this as an open standard that we could open source and develop with a community was was very compelling, and that's you know the short answer of how we got where we are, and we're we're really excited to be a part of this and and continue to support it moving forward. And and as part of the process, we realized that you know SRT also can contribute greatly to a to a low latency workflow end to end. And there's you know this is a kind of a, a timeline-ish style diagram of, of various flavors of the latency you'll see across the, of the spectrum. And, and, you know, certainly doing things one way or another has, has compromises, you know, for, for super large scale with gazillions of viewers, you know, the, the traditional HLS and, and Dash are, are, are good options, but you're going to increase latency. Um, as your latency goes down, you become a little more specialized. You might have to rely on, um, 
better tuned networks, better tuned players, and things like that. SRT can take some of the variables out of that and create a, an end-to-end -end solution that's highly available, highly scalable, and and real low latency. Now, you know, in an ideal world, you you've basically on the ingest into a into a network or a service, SRT helps greatly with minimal packet loss, low latency, but also from point to point within a network, like from an origin to an edge, from an origin to a midgress to an edge, from one cloud provider to another. Um, you can really in, in, you can really optimize those steps as well using something like SRT. All right. Sorry here. I think I okay. I'm not muted. <laughs> My apologies. I do have a cough, so if you've noticed, I've had to mute myself. Sorry, everybody. Um, all right. So uh, let's talk about uh, some use cases and how. Really, SRT contributing that first mile. Um, Gislan, you want to talk about this a little? Yeah. So I'm, I mean, actually, that's a good segue with what Barry was uh, saying. Um, you know, with the, the point to point, right? So often, what you see is, uh, you know, people actually doing either remote production or they're doing a backhaul of, uh, you know, a single camera shot or multiple camera. Uh, back to a uh, location where there's going to be uh, a little bit of production, right? A little bit of editing if it's not done directly on site. And, um, and then, so SRT helps a lot here, uh, you know, with, between encoders, gateways, transcoders, uh, decoders, pretty much, uh, you know, any network gear that you would, uh, and media gear that you would use within an event. And uh, so it, it really helps actually with the, the first mile, uh, where you capture the content, uh, you uh, you know you don't necessarily know ahead of time what kind of network you're gonna get, so it helps a lot with dealing the with the uh, unpredictability aspect of the the network, and perhaps even uh, fluctuating characteristic, and uh, all the way to perhaps a, a transcoder, uh, you know where then this could hit a, a cloud service. And, uh, and and reach uh, many many people. So uh, like SRT is, is definitely that's one of the sweet spot is is being able to to address the first mile uh, challenge. And Barry here at Wowza, we're focused on the first mile right now, correct? With oh. the Wowza streaming engine. Not, not to give away what we'll talk about in the future slides, but yeah. So so streaming engine and and very soon Wowza streaming cloud will be you know can ingest SRT. So optimizing that first mile experience to get it into your, your streaming engine or to Wowza Streaming Cloud. Um, we're working on some interesting stuff in the future that will allow more than that. And we'll talk about that in a bit. All right, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get too early <laughs> into things. Well, well, as we're discussing this, as we're discussing contribution and going into a media gateway, let's take a look at some use cases. So uh, I, I think you have one uh, customer story here that uh, you might yeah, so, yeah, for those uh, of you in the audience who actually uh, followed a little bit IBC in, uh, in September uh, 2018, so there was, uh, there was some press release, even Al Jazeera itself, uh, you know, made some public announcement. So it's a, it's a project we've done with them uh, just before actually IBC where um, they needed to uh, acquire content from a, uh, you know, a location in the U.S. and they needed to make that content available um, you know, uh, with the shortest latency possible to all their remote bureaus that they had in, in, the, in the field, right? So, and, and uh, Al Jazeera is already using Azure as, a, uh, as an infrastructure for uh, different uh, workflows internally. So we, you know, we help them and SRT help them in a way where, um, you know, we help, you know, ingesting the content. So it was SRT from uh, the location here in the US all the way to actually the cloud uh, cloud ingest point. Um, and then from there, it was uh, being processed within Azure. And we even created, uh, we use even SRT to create some sort of a highway, a meshed highway in between different Azure locations worldwide. And then, uh, you know, allow other workflows based on Avid, based on Make TV, based on Highscale, and a number of other ecosystem partners that are uh, also adopting SRT, create a, you know, a, a workflow for Al Jazeera that reduce tremendously their turnaround time when there's a news and a live event. So instead of taking hours, then they could, they could go uh, on air with, with something just within a few minutes. 
uh, putting all that, uh, that content uh, in the cloud and using SRT. Nice, uh, that sounds very useful. So this, is, this one is also another example of a point-to-point -point for uh, distribution. So in, in this case, you take uh, produce content typically. And uh, if you're a, you know, a media organization that have uh, an OTT presence, so that's a perfect workflow where you, know, you have produced content, you, you may have uh, you know, advertising uh, you know, markers within your stream that you want to preserve. So SRT is again, totally agnostic to that. Uh, we'll preserve that end to end. And uh, so you, you would you know, apply SRT to your stream, bring it to uh, you know, the first uh, cloud location and uh, to optimize the performances. And then from there, you can hit the workflow and, and do transcoding, uh, you know, trans uh, formatting and, and go with the service, uh, you know, and do dash HLS and, and so on. So that's, that's really good, uh, a good other use case for SRT where you, you can do like one to many uh, in a case of a, what I would say the distribution to the cloud network. And the, the, again, as we were talking about the focus being on the first mile in this case, or just how is it in terms of latency across the board then? Yeah, so, so if I may, so this is, uh, it's still relatively a first mile, but it's with uh, what I would say like produced content already, right? So the previous slide was more for content that was uh, already produced, but you just maybe needed to edit it after, right? To do some nonlinear editing. Uh, and this one here, in the case of distribution, it's typically produced content. Uh, so imagine like a TV station uh, that uh, is broadcasting to their, their fan base, their audience over the top. Uh, you would have, uh, you know, the, you know all, the, all the local news, all the local sports. Uh, this would be uh, already produced at a TV station, but then they need to bring it to the cloud. And uh, so they typically would use SRT to to again address this, this first mile challenge between their, uh, their control room and their uh, you know, TV station and a cloud location. Um, so, and then from there you can, you can hit the one to many as well, create some sort of a, a, you know, a highway in between multiple cloud locations uh, to make sure that there's end-to-end -end latency being preserved in between those cloud locations as well. All right. And uh, we also have one other example, I believe, with Microsoft. Yeah, so this is, this is actually a, you know, a, a concrete, uh, again, case study that we, we've done from a distribution point of view with, uh, with Microsoft. We, we do a lot of business with them. So, the, um, so in, in this case, it's an event uh, that they have been doing, uh, Inspire, um, you know, Ignite. Uh, there's, a, I think, Ready next in the next coming week or so. Uh, so there's a number of events that uh, Microsoft does, you know, with their partners and their, uh, their, their ecosystem uh, partners. And uh, so the, the solution here was, again, SRT base for uh, first mile contribution from different locations uh, where uh, like conference centers and meeting rooms and so on. So overflow rooms as well. So within the building, but over a a, uh, an unpredictable internal network, and then uh, distributed also through the Azure Media Services uh, to all the different locations where they have employees as well. So some of these things were actually broadcasted internally to all the uh, Microsoft uh, employees worldwide, and they were using the Azure Backbone, uh, leveraging SRT to distribute that content uh, to all the offices that they, uh, where they had a presence. Awesome. One, of the, one of the interesting part components in here is, is the stream SRT component, which is essentially an SRT receiver built into Azure. Um, and that can be leveraged by a variety of things, including um, Wowza's own uh, Cloud NOL service, which runs on Azure, which is uh, a very interesting component. Very cool. Um, well, hey, as we're talking about different, uh, different ways people are using you currently, I think that brings us now into 2019, right? So, Barry, maybe you want to talk first about uh, a little bit of uh, availability of how SRT is now integrated with our systems? Yeah, so, so obviously we talked about a lot of the first mile stuff, and that was our initial focus for sure. So, 
being able to take SRT into Streaming Engine. Um, soon this year, we'll be able to take SRT into Wowza Streaming Cloud. And that solves a lot of these, you know, first mile contribution problems that Jizan has highlighted on, on a couple of the other slides. Um, some of the things, you know, then I'll, that allows us to have a, a stable input stream. We know what we're getting. We can easily transcode and deliver that via various formats, um, you know, out to, out to tons of different devices. Um, one of the things we are taking a look at at Very Hard here at Wowza is SRT as a distribution format. How can we get SRT down to clients? And there are some challenges there to be sure. I mean, um, you know, it's, it's a UDP based format. So there are challenges going to browsers, but there's a big wide world of, of mobile devices and set top boxes and things where that's not such an issue. And, and High Vision themselves released a cool little app that, that plays SRT out in a, on a mobile device. And, and we're, uh, we're certainly looking hard at putting this into the GoCoder SDK for playback on mobile as well as contribution from mobile where it makes a big difference. So those are a lot of things we're looking forward to this year. Um, part of this is enabled by the newer versions of SRT. The current, current release version is 1.3, which has some interesting stuff in it um, that we can take advantage of for uh, multiplex input output streams and, and um, things like that. And we're, we're looking forward to, to continuing to move forward with that. Awesome, and I think we have something here about multiplexing. Yeah, so that's, uh, I mean, that's one of the things that the, the based on, on feedback from the community uh, and, and the uh, SRT adopters was, okay, you know, uh, it's great, uh, you know, mention about first mile and, and, you know, a few sources, but then when you, when you get into a situation where you, uh, you have like a, a more, uh, a bigger production, right, multi-camera, you may have different, you know, auxiliary services, um, all sorts of media, right? So it could be even file and so on. Um, then each SRT connection uses its own uh, port over the uh, over the firewall. And then, you know, even though it's still firewall friendly, uh, it it, re it means that the you know, there's multiple ports being open. And um, so, being the ability to actually funnel all the traffic within a single uh, connection makes it uh, you know easier uh, to from a planning point of view and uh, as well from a configurability point of view as well even from a gateway or, or you know an SRT device point of view it makes it even even simpler so so that's the that's the what the, the roadmap essentially of SRT uh, is I mean that's one of the key feature that the, that the team is working on it's really to be able to funnel all that content while preserving the integrity encryption and, and so on like all the good stuff but actually multiplexing the content into a, a single channel uh, right. without affecting the latency as well. Yeah, no, that sounds like the, a lot nicer, definitely having a single SRT stream as opposed to all those streams. Yeah. Um, you're saying you're currently still working on this? Yeah, so we're working on it. Uh, we've started, I think, showing a little bit of uh, prototyping at a few events. Uh, but this is this is something that is coming strong. It's been it's been requested. I mean, if people following on GitHub, uh, you know what's going on with SRT from a dev point of view, and and uh, you know where people where the community sees uh, where things are going with uh, with SRT. I mean, that's that's probably on the top of the list actually. Awesome. And I also see we have something about uh, stream redundancy. Yeah. So that's another thing that is uh, in the. Uh, you know, in the queue actually, uh, or being being worked on um, by the team. It's um, so people who are uh, familiar with the concept of uh, SMT 2022-7 uh, in the in a broadcast and streaming world where you have redundancy, uh, and you, so it's a it's not a backup and a failover. It's really active active where you send two copies of the same stream but it would take two different routes. Uh, and it, you know, so people would do that to, uh, to bring redundancy from a cloud point of view. They could bring redundancy as well um, with a service provider point of view. So you could have uh, an ISP uh, you know, 
could be using one ISP for root uh, one and then a, a totally separate uh, medium and separate ISP for the, the second route. So the two are active active going through, uh, you know, it's again, two SRT streams with their own characteristics. And then on the receiving end, uh, you know, this, the, the, the engine would receive like the two streams and, and actually takes the first one coming in, right? So, yeah. so the, the two paths would have, again, different characteristics because you may be losing different packets, but it doesn't really matter because the receiving end, like it will, will treat actually the first packet. So again, thanks to the timestamp that the, is part of the, the SRT, uh, you know, packet. Uh, you know, the, the receiving end knows which packet comes first, and then that's going to be the one we're going to be treating. So again, without, you know, unnecessary additional latency or anything like that, you just, you know, made your, your network uh, quite bulletproof awesome. and, uh, and get your content uh, end to end pretty right. uh, safely. Now that's nice. Like you said, uh, or you, you show in this first come first serve, right? It makes it a lot easier. So, um, before we end everyone and get to questions, I just want to remind some people who have may have logged in later, uh, questions are going to be answered through the QA window, not the chat window. I know some of you are uh, typing things into the chat, uh, but uh, if you do have QA questions, we're going to be going to those in just a few more minutes, uh, start answering some questions that are coming in, and some questions that have been asked uh, prior to this webinar uh, that people have emailed in. Uh, but I definitely uh, would like to first talk a little more about uh, our SRT Alliance and the milestones that have already been achieved, uh, as well as how people can get involved. So uh, who would like to chat a little about these milestones first? We, I think both of us can, but I'll start just for fun. Um, yeah, it, it's been incredible seeing the growth of SRT in the community and the acceptance of SRT and the amount of products that are now supporting it. It's been, you know, not quite two years. Is that right, just like? Um, like a year and a half, yeah. And, and, you know, we're over 170 members. There are well over 50 products that support SRT. And I, I suspect with NAB coming up, that number will go up significantly. Um, it's an active community on GitHub. Um, I would encourage people to continue to participate. If you're not participating, jump in there. Um, we would love to have more and more people contributing meaningful things to the code as, as, as Peter at high vision is fond of saying it's, it's, you know, it can't be just, it can't be just us. It can't be just high vision only doing the development. We want, we want other people. We want input. We want, you know, new features added. We want new features requested and, and then people jumping in to do them. And it's, it's all about making this uh, a viable standard for all of us, not just Wowza and high vision. Absolutely, I think you said it well, and and it's it's not just feature, but it's also um, in in products uh, implementing people using the the open source SRT stack and, and and running it into products that sometimes we we didn't even think about, right? So different versions of operating system and so on. That it's people people are pretty creative actually, in, in where where they run this stuff. So it's it's pretty it's pretty good to see. Uh, like the, the, you know, the, how things uh, evolve almost like a, like a snowball. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, from a, uh, how to get involved, uh, I mean, I mentioned a few references to GitHub, so you can, you can follow what's going on with SRT, contribute, ask questions. There's a full community supporting, uh, you know, SRT and the people asking questions on, on GitHub. So that's, and this is obviously where you can get additional documentation. Um, not only that, but also, uh, you know, you can see what others are doing with it. Uh, so there, there's, a, there's a pretty active community uh, on GitHub for that. The SRT Alliance website, srtalliance.org. Uh, this is where you find all the information. Uh, you know, what, the, what does it imply to be a member, uh, which is pretty straightforward and simple, frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, like, you know, we keep up to date the website uh, with regards to who are the, the members, uh, you know, like, and, and then you can actually even benefit yourself from, from that as a vendor point of view, as a partner uh, with the, uh, the marketing involved with, the, with that. And uh, if there's any question, obviously, uh, SRT Alliance, uh, info at srtalliance.org, uh, uh, sorry. 
uh, if there's any specific questions uh, with regards to uh, to how things work with the with the alliance again as a or the members if you want a little bit more details about uh, which products support srt and so on you you know there's again there's a team able to support uh, the community with uh, with those questions now, i'm sorry guys if i move forward too fast i, I know we didn't <laughs> really uh I just wanted to show all the members that we had and, you know, some of the other stuff you were talking about right now, if you do want to go through these milestones, I mean, here, here's the slide. Yeah, we're good. I mean, it, it really is about the community and the growth and things like that. So yeah, I mean, it's a lot of, it's a lot of big names and we would like to get certainly more, um, encourage, you know, wherever you can encourage your vendors, if you have vendors that don't implement SRT to, to give it a shot and say, hey, this is going to be real helpful for us. We'd love to see it in your product. Mm -hmm. uh, if you create products, add it to your product. Um, and, yeah. And if you guys do want to know more, um, please do check out these resources as well. Uh, there are some great white papers that High Vision has out, the SRT technical overview, the SRT white paper. I'm sure, uh, Gislan, you can talk about these more if you'd like to. But, I mean, obviously, the best way to learn more is to go check <laughs> Breaking up there a little bit. So uh, I think we're gonna jump over. Oh, okay. Not yep. sure why. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. You're back. You're back. All right. All right. Um, so guys, uh, thank you again, uh, Jislan. Thank you for coming out and talking about uh, about SRT. Here, if people want to learn more, uh, please, again, guys, uh, do check out both this SRT technical overview and the SRT white paper. Uh, and uh, Barry, uh, also, thank you for talking about all the new things that are going to happen with SRT in 2019. I'm very excited about it. And everybody who come to this, came to this webinar, thanks for showing up. Uh, if you do have other questions, you're welcome to contact me uh, at webinars at wowza.com. That's the email that you received to sign up here. And uh, I hope everyone has a great day. Yeah. Thanks a lot, everybody. Right. And, uh, and come see us both at NAB. Oh, yes. At NAB, we'll definitely be there. Um, multiple booths, though, Barry, right? Multiple booths, but High Vision is very near us this year, so we'll be uh, having all kinds of fun. Looking forward for it for sure. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. everyone. Thanks again for Take inviting care. me. See you guys. Thanks, Jose. See you.